I want to show you guys a handful of different variations that we use here at the gym, some of the coaching cues that I'm focusing on. So we're going to start with our bouncy micro ballistic type exercises first. So in a lot of cases here, you can go with your standard half kneeling. So we're in a kind of 90 90 ish position here, tall through this down knee and hip. And then again, it's just relax, throw and catch, throw and catch. So you can go half kneeling, you can go tall kneeling. So again, trying to think tall, a little bit of belt buckle up here to engage the abs. From there, you can get into your staggered stance activities. So here, tall, belt buckle up. Not my best work, but close enough. Split stance, again, just think kind of good posture, engaging the core and the abs throughout. So you got all those variations. And again, when I'm using a rubber medicine ball, I'm thinking fluid, relaxed, and a lot of tissue prep. From there, that's when we can get into more of our kind of lateral throwing progressions or our linear throwing progressions. So Sandy is gonna help me out here. So this really comes down to what plane of movement am I driving or what, what am I trying to develop from a speed perspective? So if I'm chasing linear acceleration, I want my weight on this front foot. I need my knee over my toe. I'm chasing my shoulders as Lee Taff would describe. And then from here, I would step and throw. So loading this front leg, step and throw. So you can go here. You can also get into more of that frontal plane or transverse plane. When we're here, I'm in that good athletic position, whether you think of it as a defensive stance, a base, whatever you think about it as, I like my feet wider than my shoulders. I wanna feel the insides of my feet. Very, very important. If I'm on the outside of my foot, which these shoes have a tendency to do, it's like spraining an ankle. You gotta find that instep because that's your brakes and that's what's gonna allow you to accelerate and push laterally. So I want that good base and then we can go with our scoop toss, right? Scoop toss if we want to work on loading the hips, try and not extend the back or throw the chest out. So I might use a scoop toss variation to try and load a little bit more effectively. Or if I wanna compress, I wanna squeeze. I get tight through here and then I'd step and throw. Again, I would throw a little bit harder, but I wanna stay in frame. So you've got your standard throws. And then once you have that base, then you can get into more of your momentum based progressions. Okay, so if I'm working to control my momentum, if I'm looking to find good angles to plant and change direction from, I'd start with my feet together, step away, find that arch, find the arch, step and throw. So here, find the arch, step and throw. As they can do that, as they control that momentum, as it looks clean, then you can start to add in more of a shuffle, right? So here, shuffle, find a position, it can be one shuffle, it can be two shuffles. The more shuffles and the heavier the weight, the more you're gonna have to really work to put those brakes on, stop and redirect force coming out, okay? Last but not least, remember how important the mass of the medicine ball is. I mean, I know I look super explosive, it's a four pound medicine ball. You put a 20 pound medicine ball in somebody's hands, it's gonna be much more challenging to control the mass and the momentum. So make sure you're picking the right weight. Make sure you're matching the training program and the exercise you choose to the athlete standing in front of you. And I hope you're more successful with your medicine ball training as a result.